we're leaning a little more towards the statistical part of things, but we're still in probability in some ways. So we are going to talk today about experiments, surveys, and observational studies. So there's very small differences between these, so you really have to get an idea of what's going on here. For instance, some of you have probably all taken a survey at one time or another. You just take a group of people, you take a poll trying to figure out how people vote for an election, or you know which flavor of cookie do you like better, or just to kind of get an idea. There's no distinct group necessarily that you're surveying. You just grab random people and start asking them questions. Okay. However, as we start to get a little more narrowed, an observational study, okay, an examination in which individuals are observed and no attempt is made to influence the results. In other words, because I always like to think of it in a way that makes a little more sense to me here, there's no human intervention. Okay, I'm going to pick out two specific groups. Maybe I pick out half of you that say you study for tests and half of you that say that you don't. Okay, That would be an observational study. I'm not telling you you have to study. I'm not telling you you have to study for a certain amount of time. But I'm going to see. Will those of you who study get higher grades or those of you that don't get higher grades? Let's just kind of see. So it restricts things a little more. So I have a couple of groups of people and I'm making a comparison between them. But then if I really want to test out something, okay, this is more of an experiment something like more you would think of with a science type class. You do something intentionally and then see what happens. So in other words, we're going to manipulate one group. We're going to say, okay, I'm going to have you do this specifically. So I'm going to give you a study guide. I'm going to give 50 of you a study guide for this test and 50 of you I'm not. And we're going to see how the test goes. So then you'd have your treatment group, the group that gets the study guide, and your what's called a placebo in science class, which is, you know, those of you that don't. And we make a comparison. Okay. So for some examples down here below, we've got 20 adult ducks, half are domesticated, and then half, of course, aren't, and we're going to compare their weights. So, now the one thing that we didn't mention before that I want to make note of, we're going to check whether each of the situations are experiments or observational studies, okay, whether we manipulated something or we were just watching. <laughs> Identify the control group and the treatment group. The one that's having something done to it or done to them would be the treatment group. And then if it's an experiment, determine whether there is bias. Now, bias isn't quite the same when we're talking about an experiment as it is when you're out in the world. It's not like, you know, it's a bias because you're a female or a bias because of this. Bias here would be having an expectation of what will happen. So for instance, if I went into the experiment I was talking about, about giving half of you a study guide and not giving you half, and I said, okay, well, I'm doing this experiment to show that students that have a study guide do better. Well, I'm going into it already determining in my head what the result's going to be. That's bias. But if I go in and say, well, I want to see how this goes, and I'm not sure, then that would be an actual experiment without bias. So something to keep in mind. So we've got our 20 adult ducks, half are domesticated, and again, that just means you're going to have it where they can be around humans and things more and not want to, like, snap their hand off and compare their weights. This would be, as it says here, observational. The domesticated ducks are the treated group because, again, they've been around humans and learned how to work with them better, and the wild ducks would be the controlled group. It's unbiased because we're just comparing weights. We're not saying the domesticated ones will be heavier or the non-domesticated will be lighter. We're not saying anything about that, so we're just going to be unbiased with our opinion. And when you're doing studies in statistics and probability, that's important because if you're biased, your information really doesn't have a whole lot, a whole lot behind it. 
second one here, and we'll get into some ourselves down here at the bottom. Determine whether the following situation calls for a survey, observational study, or experiment. Explain the process. You want to know how students and parents feel about school uniforms. Okay. Survey. So, as it says here, right, it's a survey. You're going to grab some students. You're going to grab some parents. You're not going to just grab the junior parents and just the freshmen in general, but just in general. So you ask a random sample of students and parents to give their opinions. You find something out. That's how it works. Okay? So let's see if we can get hold of this here. So state for one and two whether the situation is an experiment or an observational study. Identify the control group and the treatment group, and if it's an experiment, determine whether there is bias. Mercy. Find 300 students and randomly split them into two groups. One group practices basketball three times per week, and the other group does not practice at all. After three months, you interview the students to find out what they feel about school. Okay, Definitely an experiment. Now, why is it not an observational study? Right. You're forcing half of them to practice basketball, okay? So you're, you're kind of manipulating one of the groups. Is there a bias here? No. no, because it doesn't say after three months you interview the students to find that the ones that play basketball like school more. No, they just are saying how they feel about school. Maybe they'll hate school having to play basketball so much. I don't know, let's find out. So again, if you get that little inkling of, you know, they have an idea of what they're telling you the result's going to be before they ever do it, that's where bias would come into something. So we get 100 students in the second one. Half participated on the math team and compare GPAs. Well, the first question is, is it an experiment or an observational study? Observational study. An observational study because... We didn't say we've got two groups and we're forcing half of them to be on the math team. We just said, okay, half are on the math team, half of them aren't. Now, but identify the control and the treatment group. Which one of these two groups, the people on the math team or the other students, would be my treatment group? Okay, this is my treatment group. And then my other half, my students that aren't on the math team, that would be my control group. Now, I do want to take this on because even though I don't have to do bias or not, I heard somebody right away say biased. I was going to say, why would you say that it was biased? Oh, I was going to say, does it say the math team members are going to have a higher GPA? No. No. Oh, nice lead-in to what we're going to be doing next. Sometimes you can imply that something's going to occur even though you're not sure it's going to every time. So with that in mind, flip to the back. Ooh, runs right into this. Okay, correlation and causation. Okay, some of you might recognize something similar to this from geometry class. When one event happens, the other is more likely. When the pond is frozen, it's more likely to snow because, again, it's cold out. If you get moisture and it's cold out, you get rain slash ice. Okay. Now, does that necessarily mean that that for sure is going to happen? Ooh. No. Okay. Causation, however, one event directly causes another. If you turn on a light, a room's going to be brighter because there is more light. Huh? Well, no, that's true. So, determine whether the following statements are correlation or causation. Explain your reasoning. Children who live in very large houses usually get larger allowances than children who live in small houses. Correlation. Okay, correlation. It's not an absolute. May it happen a lot? Yes. Okay, and basically the reasoning here is solid. There's no reason to assume the size of the house causes children to receive more allowance. Children living in both a large house and getting a large allowance, could there be a result of a third factor, the amount of money the parents have? You don't know. So it's not necessarily one versus the other. So be cautious when you're doing these. And again, note the last part. We're going to explain why we feel one way or the other with this. All right. 
Number one, if I jog in the rain, I will get sick. I'm just listening again because I think I heard it right say the same thing. Okay. So if it's a correlation, how could I explain why it's not causation? Okay. <laughs> I don't always get sick when running in rain. Now, are my chances greater probably of getting sick if I'm out in the rain and getting wet and cold? Yeah. But, again, not definitely the for sure cause. Maybe you had the flu already and you just didn't know it. All right, two. Studies have shown that eating more fish will improve your math grade. Correlation. <laughs> now, I always like doing things like eating brownies could improve my math grade. Okay? Um, or if I, if I wanted to be a little more serious here, non-fish eaters can get good math grades. Now, may, may there be something in the omega-3s that make your brain function better? Maybe, but we can't definitively put our finger on that. Okay, so only causation when it's for sure. Oh, I can hardly wait on this one. If you lose a library book, you will have to pay a fine. Causation. Okay, that's causation. Well, it could be correlation because you don't have to. Unless you do if you want to graduate. Yeah, if you do not want to graduate, don't worry about paying the fine. Okay. Yeah, if I lose the book, more than likely I'm going to have to pay for it to replace it, so that would be a fine. That, that definitely would be causation. Reading a diet book will make you lose weight. Correlation. Uh huh. Yeah. Probably need to exercise. Or you could just say people that don't read diet books also can lose weight if they make life changes and things like that. But again, some sort of explanation behind it. If I miss a day of school, I will not earn the perfect attendance reward. Causation. Causation. Absence equals <laughs> not perfect attendance. Seems sensible enough. And another good one. Owning an expensive car will make me earn lots of money. Oh, correlation. correlation. Probably will mean you're in debt more, but hey. <laughs> I can make money without a fancy car. Okay. So, again, notice we did absolutely no numeric math here. And you will not be doing any numeric math with this particular assignment. Again, it's the logic that goes into mathematics that we're pushing for here. So, your job is to take care of the worksheet, the practice A, B with this. And then tomorrow, I believe, we will get into our very last very last last portion of things before we start going into some review mode here so awesomeness